Hello and welcome to another Photoshop Elements tutorial. My name is Chucky and today we're going to take this photograph and turn it into this. Now I did use some stock photography. If we jump over to DIY Photography, you can see that they have a texture store and you can pick up the Fire and Sparks pack. If you're using it for a commercial license, it's $10. If you just want to play with it, use it for your own personal use. As long as you give them credit, you can use a Creative Commons license. Now there are 30 files in there that you can choose from to make your photographs pop. Let's go back to Photoshop Elements and I'll show you how I did this. First I need to give some credit to some great photographers. I have this picture right here which was shot by Peter McConaughey. It is a picture of Elena. The second picture we're going to be using is this one, Katie Silzer, and it is a picture of her younger sister. It's a great photograph but we are just going to give it just a little bit more pop and I'll show you how I did that. Now I'm going to hide all these layers and we are going to rebuild this photograph much like a cooking show. So if I hold down the option key I can turn off all the layers at once and see my original photograph. The first thing that we need to do is we need to brighten up the eyes a little bit so we can get that fiery orange to stick to the eyes. If you look at this layer that I have right here you can see that I lightened up the eyes just a little bit. So how you do that is we make sure that our layers palette is visible. Then we go to the black and white cookie tool, as I call it. Click the drop down arrow and we go to our levels tool. And then we're going to brighten everything up by dragging the center slider over to the right. Now we really don't care about the rest of the picture, but what we do want is we want the eyes to brighten up just a tiny bit. So additionally, we're going to bring over the white slider until we get a nice light brown in the eyes. Now we're going to mask this off so I wouldn't worry about it too much. And when we're happy, we can click the X right there to get rid of it. As you can see, this is a mask right here, and we want to mask out everything but the eyes. The first thing that we can do is use the command or the control I, and what that will do is that will negate our levels layer right here. Then we're going to paint back in with the white paintbrush. So go to your paintbrush right here. You can use the size that's a little bit smaller than the eye and we're going to paint that. And then if you go to your brush settings right here, we can use a softer brush. So I'm going to take this off of 100 and I'll put this somewhere around 35. Tick the X and then we need to zoom in to paint the eye. So use the command or the control, the plus sign, and it will zoom in to the eye so that we can paint it a little bit lighter. Now my brush is still too large, so I'm going to use the left bracket key just to make that just a tiny bit smaller. Last bit of warning, make sure that you are on the mask and that you're painting with the white inside your foreground palette. Then let's paint away right here. Don't worry if it's too much because we can always take this down and we're also going to put another color on top of that. So she has a little bit brighter eye right in here and then I'm going to paint on this eye. Now I am not taking a lot of care in painting so I would suggest that you paint very carefully so that you're just getting the eye. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. We can go to the opacity of this layer and tune it down just a tiny bit and then it won't be quite as light. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add another layer on top of that so that we can paint in some fiery orange. So go to the top, go to the little dog ear that we have here. That is a new layer. So we'll click on a new layer. Next, we want to go to our foreground palette. We want to click on that. We want to set our foreground palette color. If we go down to this one right here, it'll show you what we're picking. Right here, we want something nice and bright as far as orange. I'm going to move this way over here to get something fiery orange. And when I'm happy, I'll select OK. Now we need to make sure that we're going to paint once again. So hopefully you didn't change off of the brush tool. Now we're going to paint right on top of her eyes where we painted the mask 
If it looks like it is a spray can, don't worry about it because we are going to change the blending mode in just a few seconds. Once I have that area of the eye painted, let's go to the other area of the eye. And once again, please be careful. I am just doing this as a tutorial and I'm not being very careful, but you want to make sure that you paint within the eye. Now you can also use the eraser tool right there and erase any kind of mistakes because it is a transparent layer. Now we need to go to the top. We're going to go to the blending mode right here. Now it's going to be different for everyone because they're not using the same model. So I'm first going to choose overlay to see how that works. And it actually works pretty good, but I will show you some of the other ones. I like to use soft light once in a while to give it just a little bit less. But in this case, we're going to go over the top and we're going to select overlay. You can dial it down just a little bit and it won't be quite as fiery. And I'm happy with it right there. The next layer that we add is a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And we're going to take out the color and add that orangey color. So let's use the command zero. And what that's going to do is it's going to zoom it back to where you can see the entire picture. Then go back to the black and white cookie tool and then go to hue and saturation. Now we're going to tick the colorize box right there and then we are going to play with the hue until we get it into a nice orange color. We can also bump up the saturation right there to make it a little bit more orange and we can play around with the lightness and darkness right here until we get the color that we want. I want it just a little bit more on the orangey side. And then when I'm happy, tick the X right there, we'll get rid of it. Once again, if it's too much, we can always go to the opacity slider and tune it down just a little bit. Now, if this isn't orange enough for us, we do need to go and add a photo filter. So I'm going to go back to the black and white cookie tool and then I'm going to choose photo filter. We have one right here as a default, which is this orange, or we can bump up the orange to a nice super bright orange. And when we're happy, we can click OK. And then we can choose this slider right here to tell how much orange we want to add to that photo filter. So there's two ways to do this. We can bump it up using the hue and saturation, adding a colorized layer, and then we can add just a little bit more color using our photo filter. It's up to you whether you want to use one or both methods. When I'm happy with the color, let's see what the warming filter does. I will go back to the orange again and I will up this just a tiny bit. And when I'm happy, I'll tick the X. And there we have our next layer. Now this picture is coming along really well, but there isn't enough contrast in it to give it that really fiery look. So we're going to go to the top. Once again, we're going to go to the black and white cookie tool, and then we're going to add a brightness and contrast or a levels. It's up to you which one you want. I'm going to click levels for this one and then I'm going to take the black set point and I'm going to move that down to give it kind of a little bit more darkness and then I'm going to take the one on the right, the white set point, and I'm going to bring that up just a little bit and we're going to add just a tiny bit of contrast in this. And finally we can take the gray set point slider and we can move it left if we want it a little bit brighter and we can move it right if we want it just a little bit darker. And when we're happy we tick the X one last time right there. Now we need to get those fiery eyes back. And how we're going to do that is we're going to move that layer that we painted orange and we're going to move it to the top. So click on the layer two or whatever layer number that you have and then move that all the way to the top of our layers palette. And as you can see, it brought that nice fiery orange back. Now the last thing that we're going to do to this picture is add those fiery sparks and that's the most important part of this. Now when you saved your fire and spark zip file, make sure that you note where you've saved it and then where you've uncompressed it. Now I saved mine on my desktop so I'm going to go to file, then place, and then inside my folder I am going to select number five right here and I'm going to place that 
on that photo. And as you can see, it shrunk the file size down to my picture size. Now when I'm happy with that, I can tick the green check right there. Now of course we can't see the girl underneath the sparks right now, and that's because we need to change the blending mode. I'm going to go to normal, and I want to change that to either screen or lighten. And that's going to depend upon your model and how dark your picture is. If we start with the screen, you can see that that is pretty light. It's still nice, and we have all these sparks right on the picture, but I'm going to check out how the other one looks, and that one's called lighten. And as you can see, it puts a few less sparks and it's a little bit less distracting on your model. Now you have a lot of sparks near the face, and although that looks good, I'm going to take some of those sparks out so that it's not quite as distracting. So I'm going to add a layer mask right here, and then I'm going to paint with a little bit of black. So let's go to the gradient tool, which is right here. If you don't have white and black in there, you can press D on your keyboard to make sure that the default colors will be in here. And then choose the circular or the diamond gradient right there. I'll show you what the radial or the circle gradient looks like. From here, we need to jump over to this reverse box right there. So I'm going to click on that reverse box. And as you can see, it's going to go from black to white. So click on the center of her face and then move on out to the side just a little bit. And as you can see, it hid some of the sparks near the face and it's a little bit less distracting. If you want something larger, you can go somewhere down to her nose and then drag the line out just a little bit. And as you can see, some of the sparks down here disappeared. And the larger that you make this, the more the sparks disappear near her face. And there we have it. This one is finished. So now I'm going to jump to the next photo right there. I'll hold down the Option key so that you can see the original photo right there. As you can see with this picture, the eyes are already nice and bright, but we're going to add just a tiny bit of contrast. So let's go to the black and white cookie tool at the top, and we're going to add a levels adjustment layer right there. We're going to bring these in from both sides. Now just pay attention once again to the eyes. Don't worry about anything else because we're going to mask all that off. So bring the black slider in, bring the white slider in just a little bit until there's a nice contrast there. And then if we want to slide the gray one over to the left or over to the right to make it just a teeny bit darker or more contrasty. When we're happy, we can come up to the top and tick the X right there and get rid of that. Now we need to mask everything off. So we're going to make sure that we are clicked inside our mask right here. And we're going to press Control I or Command I and that will make everything go away. Now go to the brush tool. If you can remember, we're going to paint with the white, so make sure that your brush fits her eye. You can use the right and left bracket tools to adjust the size of your brush, or you can go left and right, but it's a little bit easier to see it on the screen. Go to your brush settings and make sure that the hardness is still set at about 36 or 35. You can go to Command Plus or Control Plus on a PC and you can zoom in on the photo and then we're going to paint right on the eye so that it makes it just a little bit more contrasty right there. And that looks nice. I'm going to go to this eye and as you can see it's a little bit more contrasty right there. Then of course we're going to add that super orange so add another layer at the top by going to the dog ear and add a new layer then we still have our orange that has been set from the previous photo so I'm just going to paint on this layer that nice orange. Once again take your time to paint real close to the eye. Just paint inside the colored part of the eye right there and pay special note to not go outside the lines too much right there. I'm doing a real poor job, but I want to hurry up and finish this. Then we go to our blending modes, and of course we can choose either the overlay or the soft light. So let's see what the overlay looks like. That looks pretty nice. It's pretty <laughs> bold and fiery there. Let's take a look and see what soft light looks like. 
a little bit less. So I'm going to choose the overlay and then I will bump the opacity down just a tiny bit there. And as you can see, if you made some mistakes, we can just click on the eraser tool and we can erase those areas that we didn't do a very good job in tracing. I'm not going to take the time to do that, but you can on your photo. I'm going to add our hue and saturation adjustment layer right there. Tick the colorize box, and then I'm going to move this to the color that I want. Add a little bit of saturation there so that it's a little bit more orange. And then play around with the lightness and darkness right here till I'm happy. Then tick the X right there to get rid of that dialog box. If you want to, you can hit Command or Control-0 to get that back to the original size. Now on this one, I don't think I need to add the photo filter, but if you do want to add that, you can go to the black and white cookie tool at the top and choose photo filter. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. The next thing we need to do is we need to add a little bit of contrast to this photo, just like in the other one. So I am going to go to the black and white cookie tool and I'm going to choose levels. I'm going to bring in the black from the side and then I'm going to bring the white in from the right hand side, give it a little bit more contrast and then I can change my gray set point right there and when I'm happy tick the X one last time. Now of course we lost our eyes so we need to grab that layer. In my case it's layer 3 and we're going to drag that at the top and then those nice fiery orange eyes are back again. The last thing of course we're going to place the sparks so we go to file then place. Now I've saved these on my desktop so it takes me back there. I used number 16 on this one and there is our photo superimposed on a new layer. When you're happy with that, you can tick the green checkbox right there. And then to make that see-through, we need to go to the top where our blending modes are. And then, of course, we are going to change that to either screen or lighten. So we're going to check the screen out first. One's a little bit too bright, so I'm going to change that to lighten. I do like that one. And then last but not least, we are going to add a layer mask to that. We are going to go to our gradient tool right there. It still has the reverse set. So I'm going to start in the middle and then I'm going to move this out to the side right there to get rid of some of the fire and spark on our face, but leave some of the fire and spark on the other parts of the picture. And there we have it. We've turned some really amazing photos into some super amazing photos with the fire and spark. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I will also leave a link to the texture store at DIY Photography. Thanks for the photographers for letting me use these two photos with the Creative Commons licensing. Please subscribe to my videos, give me a thumbs up, tell your friends that you found a great place for Photoshop Elements tutorials. Cheers!